Agro is my real estate journey. It has been, uh, it, has, it is really a journey. I've been in practice for 40 years, gone through three recessions, and uh, very pleased to still be able to stand here to give you this paper today. Um, my paper will be, I don't know whether you will allow one hour, but uh, if you have, if I have to stop at four, I only have um, 40 minutes. Nevertheless, the paper will be about half an hour. And I think looking at uh, the last paper, maybe questions and answers are more interesting. Yeah. Um, the first part is my journey, which uh, naturally will uh, tell a little bit of history of my educational background. Second part is Brian Nicole today, um, which is what my practice is today. And in the sharing of my experience, um, uh, especially in the real estate business, as you know, a uh, firm of chartered surveyors, in addition to doing estate agency, also does valuation, property management, and consultancy work and research. And the last one um, is sharing with you what the industry concerns are today. And I want to focus this on the liberalization of the profession. Um, so on the first part, I'm from Pantan. Um, born in a village called Kampong Hoduri, which is on the bank of Pantan River. And therefore, during the recent floods, the whole Kampong was affected. And a few houses were washed away. And, uh, a lot of people had to be moved out, about a thousand people had to stay in one school, and for two days we didn't get any food, and without any light for two days. Um, my early education in secondary school was in Sultan Ismail College um, in 1951, so you know how old I am. Um, at that time, there were only three secondary schools in and only one secondary school offered up to form five. The rest were up to form three. Um, and I finished my, what was then called the Cambridge School Certificate in 1957. And at that time, there was not one school in Clanton that offered form six. Therefore, I had to travel all the way to Penang and have my secondary, my sixth form in Penang preschool. Finishing my um, sixth form, was lucky enough to get a scholarship. And there was only one university then. Uh, we were just transferred to Singapore. Just started its uh, impact life at um, Delhi. Of course, there was no course in Chartered way. So I had to go overseas. Luckily, I got a scholarship. Went to London, uh, started at Hammersmith College of Building and later at the College of Estate Management, which was then part of the University of London. Now, as you all know, some of you may know, uh, University of Reading, is, um, College of Estate Management is now part of the University of Reading. Worked in London for two years at a place called London Borough of Hounslow, uh, a, government, uh, a local authority uh, as a property manager, and came back in 1968 saying that, here I come, this year is paved with gold. But uh, having to join the government service uh, in 1968 at the valuation department, all I did was valuation for stamp duty. Uh, based in Penang, um, having to travel to Perle, Eskandar, and so on, I said, my God, after being in London for six years, if this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, I'll be bored, man. Just valuing the petty lands for stamp duty purposes. And maybe a little bit of land acquisition and whatever. So I then decided that um, uh, after I have served my, my, my uh, obligation to the government for six years, for five years, 
I got myself seconded to the main railways as part of this manager, uh, and then uh, invited by the by Tinko Rezali, who was the managing director of Bank Bumiputra then. And then I um, retired or resigned from the government service and became the properties manager of Bank Bumiputra in 1973. Um, having, well, working for a politician, Tinko Rezali was invited to be the finance minister uh, in 1976, by the late and uh, when he was invited to, the prime minister, uh, to be the finance minister, I went to his office and said, Tengu, uh, this actual work, uh, Tengu nak jadi finance minister, hati dah kerja dengan bank tiga tahun. Kalau kerja as hard as I have worked with bank, I think I can make it with my own. So I said, uh, I'm going to set up a firm. They got a do it or So I said, I don't have to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I don't have to do it. So I said, OK, I'll give you 30 percent, $30,000 over time. So I started the IMO group. On the 1st of December, with a capital of $10,000, with an overdraft facility of $30,000 from Bank of Putra, which made me sleepless nights at that time. Pinjam the magic. Anyway, that's how Ryan Co started. Well, those are the uh, a little bit about the history of Ryan Co in the 1970s. 1976 was the setting up. We opened our first office in uh, one time, uh, about six months later. Second office in one time. And all the various offices, now we run 18 offices uh, with, in all the state capitals, including two offices in Kedah, which is Sungantani, Narosta. Uh, I don't know whether this is boring, but it will come to be more interesting, I believe. And uh, in the 1990s, we got ourselves affiliated to the FPD Sabos, which is listed in the London Stock Exchange. Uh, we have been affiliated to them for 20 over 20 years. Um, and the latest news is uh, PNB has, we are now in agreement, I can now announce it. We are now in agreement with PNB. PNB is going to own 49% of Ryan And because of that, uh, unfortunately, we cannot offer any shares to Savos and therefore Savos. I think the market already knows. They are former company for Savos uh, Malaysia, uh, which is the old Chris Boy, um, CBR. So that is the story of the, of the, of the marketplace. Yeah? Uh, Rainico is now mutually uh, divorced from Savos, and Savos is from Savos Malaysia, which is buying up the practice. CBR, right? That is the news of the corporate, a little bit of corporate in the various cities. Next. Now we are in all those uh, places in the map, uh, 2018 offices with 350, depending on when, between 350 and 400 staff. Uh, the map that doesn't show offices in Kedah, I don't know for some reason, maybe it's our thing. Uh, and doesn't show PG office, but we have PG offices. Right? Now, I need just to blow a little bit of trumpet of my own. Uh, these are some of the upgrades uh, that we have received in the years uh, 2013 and 2014. And uh, we are, I believe, the only professional firm that is included as uh, Sharikat uh, Prestasi by Triju, which means that uh, if I want to help and try to, I will be able to do so. Now, this is our beginning. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the real estate agency business, uh, incidentally, when I started my firm in 1976, 
there was no act uh, that restrict anybody doing agency business. So my uh, company competitors were just household wives. Uh, what uh, people who do part time because there was there was only C H Williams, if I'm not mistaken, Wilson Partners. Jones Lang Wooten was even not there. It was then called uh, Wilson Partners. So there was really no competition except from housewives who do part time real estate business. There was no rule. There was no fee structure. Um, you can charge anything you want, uh, provided the clients want to pay. She is smiling because she was there when. There was no rule. Now you. <laughs> anyway, uh, those are some of the things that we did. We, we did Taman Kim, which was actually we acted as, pro as project managers uh, as well as agents on behalf of Tansri Azman of Maybank, of Hoji Bank at the time. Uh, Taman Jaya in Alam Raja, Complex uh, Banda in uh, Kuala Lumpur, and Complex Sunto in Kuantan which was the first high-rise building in, in, in Kuantan then. Moving on to the 1980s, these are some of the things that we have done, the British government uh, uh, deal, which at that time, 72 million was a very big deal. Uh, we were the sole agent of Wisma Sangdabi, and then we started doing, going and selling overseas. I believe we were one of the first pioneers to sell properties overseas, started with Kensington Gardens, which is behind Barker's, those of you who know London. And we are very happy to say that 50% of the sales were to us, which was pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty good uh, record. And we were also the first property managers of Putra World Trade Center, um, and I believe the number also at that time. Now moving on in the 2000, in the year 2000 upwards, we again became the sole agents for the British High Commission land care, which was so restricted. Uh, and numerous luxury apartments in Colonia. We sold, or we brokered Bangna Masi KL and the Mars <coughs> Chartered Bank uh, in uh, on Jalapa. Huh? Yes. Um, we have intensified with a lot of competition from, you all know who sell overseas properties, but uh, we have our share of the market. Uh, we are the sole agents for new, sale agents for uh, New Bank site, uh, the library in the UK, and Wellington House in the UK. Um, those are some of the overseas properties that we've done. Now I'd like to share you some of the learning experiences and key factors for a successful uh, business, uh, which are, at least from my point of view, which may help to share. Well, it's very clear. Leaders are people who inspire with a clear vision of how things can become better. Before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself when you become a leader. Success is all about growing others. That's uh, the words of the CEO of General Electric. I think all this need not be told to you anymore, actually. Confidence and self-belief. I, one of the things that I always have is confidence in myself. Uh, I always believe that uh, if somebody else can do it, I can. That has always been my belief. That is why those associated with overseas people we are never overwhelmed. Because I believe that kalau masalah yang boleh buat, tak boleh ada masalah sini. Kalau masalah yang boleh buat, orang Malaysia pun boleh. So why do we get all these big names to sell properties in London? If we can, after all, we're selling in Malaysia. That's what my opinion. This is not, uh, this, is, this is what I always believe. Um, and a business plan. I always plan my business uh, because fail to plan is equal to plan to fail. Success of business depends on how well you anticipate and react to market movements. 
You can always rely on luck. Uh, I believe in hard work. Uh, and I believe in dealing with shit uh, to the till the night. And human capital. Um, human resource, the, the, the one that people are not your biggest asset, the right people are. I think all of you, you know this. Uh, it is not the bus, it's the people that you put on the bus. Uh, no matter how many agents you have, if they don't deliver, you don't get the success. Therefore, uh, it is the people that you choose that is important to make your business successful. Uh, of course, you have to take care of your financial management and discipline. We all know that, especially in my case, because I started in 1976, so I went through three recessions. The first one, as you know, was in 1986. Um, that was bad, but when came the financial crisis, that was worse. I think not only us in real estate, even banks went bust. But I'm very happy to say that uh, I went through this crisis um, not, not always, uh, not wounded, but have been able to heal the wounds. So, but therefore, it is important that you plan your financial uh, plans in order to succeed. Focus. Focus is one of the things that you need to do. In business, I have long decided that I will not go into any business um, that I cannot focus on. There are a lot of people that, if you are a big multinational, it's okay because you have the right people. But if you want to be a real estate agent and yet you want to sell cement and you want to be in construction, I think you must be focused. You must not do anything that you are not familiar with, otherwise you fail. I went into people uh, during my, uh, you know, uh, when I, the business was good, but uh, I knew that timber was not my business, and true enough, I lost $5 million through an investment to a timber company because I couldn't focus. And of course, product quality and consistency is very important. Uh, people must know you before they come to you. And uh, people have to trust you and your brand. Then only they will come to you. Because we know a lot of uh, agents and you know, whoever. And I'm sure all of you here are registered and you know, properly trained. And People will come to you if, if they trust you. Yeah, that, that's the... Um, so those are some of the sharing of, of the leadership, confidence, I believe, which I've come to. Okay? Now I want to talk a little bit about revitalization, which is a subject uh, much talked about. As we all know, our practice is governed by uh, an act of parliament called uh, the Value Asset Basis and Savings Act, which until one and a half years ago restrict the ownership of valuation and estate agency business to people who are registered in the board. But in order to conform to the government's policy of liberalization, especially now that we are chairing the ASEAN community, uh, the Valuers Appraisal and Estate Agents Act was amended, which now allows 49% of our shares to be held by corporate bodies or individuals who are not registered, including those who do business. I think you all know that. Therefore, in moving with the times, I took initiative and therefore in my case 
I had taken the initiative to get a corporate body to own my shares. And fortunately, we were approached and we have accepted the, this 49% uh, holding by a corporate body. Now, there are the 51% the control means, uh, I mean, the 49% means 51% of the board <coughs> and the management must be held by registered people. That, I think, the law is very clear. It must not only be named, in name, but you must really, you must run the business, though your corporate uh, shareholder will be 49%, who hopefully will be giving you the additional capital as often as required. There are advantages and disadvantages of liberalization. The advantages are, um, number one is we will conform to the government's policy to adhere to various free trade agreements committed to WTO and NAFTA. You see, uh, the practice or the profession here is tailored on the British system when we first achieved independence in 1957. The profession tailored this uh, mostly from the Royal Institution of Chapman's Bay. Uh, but the British changed. They allow valuation practices to be hold by corporate, co corporate people, but we never changed. We refused to change because we want to uh, protect our territory. You know, we don't want other people to come and so on. I was one of those fighters. If samples can be uh, listed in a stock exchange, why not a homegrown company in Malaysia be listed in the Kuala Stock Exchange? But we can't. CPRE, which is the biggest company in the world, is listed in the New York Exchange. Because uh, they allow it in, in America, but we don't allow it. Why? The reason is because we're so conservative. We copied the British law. <coughs> and when the British change and the Americans change, we refuse to change. All of you guys, I don't know what your attitude is in this, but uh, why not? Uh, when people can give us the capital, we run the business. Uh, why can't we have a homegrown Malaysian company operating in London? if we have enough capital. And the only way by which we can get enough capital is through selling our shares to corporate bodies. The second thing is to attract investments. Uh, this, uh, you know, when we have a free trade, in, people will come to Malaysia and so on. Knowledge and te technology transfer, of course we all know that. Uh, we have a lot of uh, British agents now the streets of Kuala Lumpur to sell properties in London and, and so on. Hopefully all these people who come to our country will give us the transfer of technology and knowledge. Uh, higher value employment if we, uh, we are, will be able to give more commissions to our agents and so on. And uh, competitiveness will be strengthened. Uh, there will be more firms with bigger capital and so there will be competitiveness in the market, which is good for the business. Um, and I think it will also enhance productivity and also a chance for us to go into the international market. I don't know about you, if, if uh, I open an office in China, I need a one million US capital to open an office in China. If you don't want, if you want to be competitive, if you cannot, open an office in China and just have two or three staff, you will never be successful. This is, this is why I say that we have to open up our shares so that people can come in, corporate bodies can come in. But there are disadvantages. And these disadvantages are what happens to small firms. The small firms will, uh, will dominate the market, leaving the the bigger ones, especially the international firms. Masalah kita ni, di Malaysia ni, kalau nama firm ke nama Mak Saleh, ha, itu yang dia. Sebab tu dah banyak firm sini ni dah tukar daripada Saleh Company kepada 
uh, for that in the country uh, as well. Uh, this is our general initiative I mentioned in color of Madalian in East India Bengal. And uh, the attraction in Iran was a small pearl. The bigger pearl will swallow or will get, will attract uh, more uh, the, the, the better staff and whatever. So there is a real danger in this. But if I'm a small pearl, um, we must have ambition to follow through and get ourselves, our, our capital increased in this and so on. So my attitude, instead of being grabbed by the bigger fish, let all these small fish, at least in Malaysia, let us grab the bigger fish. <laughs> so, um, thank you very much. That's it. I don't know how much I've seen. So I'm, I, I haven't taken any, anybody's time. So I'd be more than pleased to answer questions or get comments and, and so on. I hope I haven't bored you too much. Uh, but really, uh, this is what uh, the business is all about. Okay, can we take some questions from the floor? Um, anything that anyone wants to check with uh, Yang Mahoban, Senator Tan Sri, on his real estate journey? It always amazes me what a, uh, the same amount of years given to an individual, and some individuals achieve so much more, and some don't achieve anything. Um, that's why I say some people can be the president of the United States. The same amount of years that we live. So I think it's a very good time. If any of you have any questions, dying to check or clarify with uh, YB, please do ask. Okay. Are there? Incidentally, uh, on the privatization, the architects, uh, the engineers, and the Ponzi surveyors have also opened up, but only up to 30%. Uh, that means 70% of architectural, engineering, and Ponzi surveying practices uh, are open. I mean, 70% must be controlled by Questions. Okay, if there are no other questions, thank you very much for having me. And, uh,